Good morning, Hope Point Church. i um, miss seeing your faces and I wish you were right here engaging as we open his word. But I'm glad that right now, even on your couch, wherever you are, that you can get your Bibles out, get your phones out. We're going to go and study the word of God. You know, I mentioned on Wednesday night during our prayer night that one of the things I'm concerned about this season is that we would become spectators. You know, if you're sitting on the couch and letting, you know, the team on screen lead you in worship or you're just checking out and it's like watching TV, then we've missed the whole point. This is for us to lean in, to hear his word, to worship him, to engage, to um, study the scriptures, to let it encourage us, be life to us. Thank you for... Um, yeah, going the extra mile in that and really going even beyond what you feel like is even feels a bit awkward sometimes in the room. But thanks for engaging and leaning in. Uh, so let's pray together. Father God, we thank you that we can come to you today, that even as we open up your word, will you speak a fresh Holy Spirit? Uh, you're, you, there's no barrier in you. So this TV screen or this you know, device between us, Lord God, is nothing to you. Thank you that you can work and it's, it's your spirit anyway. So I pray that you would, you would uh, use the words that are spoken today and that you would breathe life and breathe, um, breathe healing, all that you need to. Let your word go forth today and may you be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I hope you're well and surviving this weird time of uh, social distancing and isolation and all that kind of thing. The beautiful thing is that even though we're, um, you know, there's distance with us socially, there doesn't have to be a community. And I've loved connecting with many of you over different Zoom calls and different groups. And I know that, um, you yeah, know, it's just been so great to connect in different ways. Even Wednesday night, we had our prayer night. And we're looking forward to this next week, every day uh, this week. Pastor Warren has a devotion that will hit YouTube. So you don't want to, in the morning, so you don't want to miss that. Just a short uh, five, ten minute devotional just to encourage you. We're going to walk through the Psalms every day with him. And I'm really excited about that. And then even Wednesday night, um, we're going to gather again online for our prayer, uh, worship and prayer night. And then uh, Friday, we have a Good Friday service. And we have a special guest speakers. Bill and Harriet Mauer are going to be bringing a word for us as our team leads some worship. And then they're going to bring word for us Good Friday morning. And then Sunday morning with Pastor Warren, we're going to get ready to celebrate uh, Easter and Easter Sunday. Well, today we are continuing our series uh, that we are a people of. And we talked the very first week that we're a people of peace. Remember how we were socially distanced appropriately in the auditorium and we talked about how Jesus is in our boat and because he's with us the presence of God with us we can withstand anything and so even last week Pastor Warren talked about how we're a people of great confidence that God is still on the throne and that we can trust him we're dependent on him relying on him and now today we're going to unpack just a different thought that we are people of the way so if you're taking notes we're people of the way. You know, in the early church, the word Christian wasn't used. In fact, the word Christian wasn't used till much later on in church history. But the word, they would how they would describe one another, they would say that they are people of the way. And in John uh, chapter 14, um, it was a really uncertain time for the disciples. And Jesus said to them this. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by me. And when he said, um, I am the way, the message translation, uh, paraphrase, Eugene Peterson says, um, I am the road. I love that. God is our road. He's our way. He's our pathway. And so today we're going to talk about that we are people of the way. I don't know about you, but I've, even as I've been connecting with different people this week, one of the number one things, and even as you read newspapers and check out the news the number one thing on people's mind is it's just so uncertain I have no idea how things are going to be tomorrow what restrictions might be how things how the world is am I doing the right thing there's so many things that are uncertain and so much change and um, you know whether it's having to work from home or you're juggling the kids as well or there's change in social patterns that can result in angst or anxiety it's just a period of uncertainty and what does God say about us amongst uncertainty we're people of the way and because we are people of the way we can have certainty in uncertain times because we are people of the way we can have certainty in uncertain times 
uh, today is Palm Sunday and I love preaching a good Palm Sunday message. There's lots of different things to unpack. And if you open your Bibles to John chapter 12, I want to read to you from verse 12 in the account that John gives around the triumphal entry and when Jesus came into Jerusalem in that final week of Jesus um, before he went to the cross. Verse 12, it says in the NIV, it says, And the next day, the crowd that had come for the festival, that's Passover, heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first his disciples did not understand this, only after him and that these things had been done to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word and many people because they had heard that he had performed this sign went out to meet him. So here's Jesus. Uh, he just um, had that amazing um, event where he raised, called out Lazarus from the grave and Lazarus um, has risen from the dead. Um, he's anointed with oil for burial and now he, um, he's going to travel on a donkey down those um, down that pathway past the Mount of Olives down into Jerusalem and he would come um, into uh, the city and into the town through the gates. We know that that day was Lamb Selection Day. That was the day that the people of Israel would um, watch as the lambs from Bethlehem, the Paschal lambs, the lambs that had been reared especially for Passover and for the sacrifice they would be brought in from Bethlehem and the same time as the Lamb of God Jesus our King is coming down uh, that mount those lambs on lamb selection day are coming down um, from Bethlehem on the other side coming in to the temple signifying that Jesus was our sacrifice and he is our Passover lamb and the thought uh, struck me even as um, you know, we're thinking about this. Jesus had a bunch of followers and the 12 disciples weren't the only ones, but they were his main followers. How do you think they felt? All of a sudden, Jesus is king. He's been trying to prepare them for his death. He's trying to prepare them for change. He's trying to prepare them for even the uncertainty. Um, he's talking to them in parables and in story and uh, they feel the uncertainty and all of a sudden now he's riding in on a donkey you know if a king was coming in on a horse he was saying you know the military strength that he was coming in and the power that he would come in to overthrow the horse was the symbol of military strength Jesus came in on a donkey when a donkey would come into a town in that day it was signifying peace and so the Prince of Peace is now sitting on top of this donkey coming into Jerusalem and as he as the King of Glory begins to come into Jerusalem at the same time the lambs are coming in on lamb selection day ready for Passover ready for the sacrifice Jesus is coming down the people are throwing down their cloaks and they've got their palm branches you know if you um, remember nothing in the New Testament um, is random there's oftentimes hints from the Old Testament if you look at 2 Kings chapter 9 verse 13 when um, Jehu was anointed king of the north of Israel, it says, um, verse 11, when Jehu went out to his fellow officers, one of them asked him, is everything all right? Why did this maniac come to you? You know the man and the sort of things he says, Jehu replied. That's not true, they said, tell us. And Jehu said, here is what he told me. This is what the Lord says. I anoint you king over Israel. Now listen to this. They quickly took off their coats and spread them under him on the bare, bare steps they blew their trumpet and shouted, Jehu is king. And so right here is a reference to what happened when a king uh, was declared. They would put down their cloaks. They would um, begin to shout. There was much praise and celebration. The exact same picture as what was happening as Jesus was coming in uh, that day into Jerusalem. But we would go very quickly in the story if you have a look, even if you just turn and look at the chapter headings in your Bible. It goes from Jesus coming into Jerusalem to him predicting his death to verse uh, chapter 13 where he washes the disciples' feet. He predicts his betrayal. He predicts Peter's denial of him. 
And then chapter 14, the heading of my Bible says, Jesus comforts his disciples. Hang on a minute. Jesus, you were just coming in from uh, Jerusalem. You are king. You're going to come in. You're going to save, save. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Save us, O king of Israel. And now Jesus is saying, actually, guys, how you thought it was going to happen, it may not happen that way. And they're not alone. Even in this season, there are some things that we thought God would do a certain way. And he doesn't do it that way. He chooses a different way. He has a different plan and a different purpose. And he uh, uses things that were intended for evil. He has a plan to turn it around for good. Chapter 14, Jesus says this. He's talking to his disciples. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me, my father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Okay, hang on a minute, Jesus. How do I know the way to where you're going? I thought that you were going to come in and, you know, they're under Roman oppression. They want out of all that's happening. I mean, I was thinking even with some of the changes in laws and things and people are getting, you know, in trouble just for being, you know, out in their cars late at night. I mean, it's nothing. It's not oppression. It's nothing. It's just simple laws. But imagine, I mean, that's as close as we can imagine probably most of us right now to the thought of that kind of control. Well, this is, this is unbelievable. They're under Roman oppression financially, socially. They're restricted in their movements. They're restricted in terms of, the, you know, the, the taxes are unbelievable. They're an oppressed people and they are looking for a savior. They are looking for someone to come in, overthrow the government. Let's get this party started. Let's go back to us being a people. They had lost even the identity and their own rulership and everything in all that was going on. And you and I kind of can feel the same. We thought we knew how this was going to go. We thought 2020 looked one way. And now within a matter of weeks, 2020 can look a lot different. And you and I would not be alone if we were asking the question, God, what are you doing and where are you in this? And he wants to remind you, you are not people of the world. You are in the world, but you are not of the world. You are people of the way. And because you are people of the way, how you walk this next however many weeks, months, will be different because you are different because you have um, the love of God, the peace of God, the spirit of God working in you that produces fruit for this season specifically. So it's interesting to me that Jesus is like, well, you know the way. And, you know, you, if you were one of his disciples and Thomas says it. He says what everyone's thinking maybe. Well, particularly maybe what we would have been thinking. I'm not sure about the other guys in the room. But it says, Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how can we know the way? Like we're so confused. We thought you'd set us up for these three years. We thought you were going to do this amazing thing. We're going to overthrow the government. We're going to save the people of Israel. Save your, you know, they've got this revelation. You are the Christ, son of the living. You know, the disciples are hearing all this. They're being taught by their savior Jesus and he says this Jesus answered I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me if you really know me you will know my father as well and from now on you do know him and have seen him and Philip said Lord show us the father and that will be enough for us and Jesus answered don't you know me Philip even after I have been among you so been among you such a long time. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. And Jesus says, you know where I'm going. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I'm going to the Father, and the way to the Father is through me. Okay, so if we are people of the way, 
What does that mean for our everyday lives? What does that mean as we go through this life? Um, you know, uh, I read a book early on this year called Make Your Bed. And it's a, I can't actually remember the author right now, but it's a, a great little book. And it's from a guy who was a Navy SEAL. And he begins to, I think it's 10 or 12 little tips that he learned in his Navy SEAL training. The book is about how in Navy SEAL training, an individual undergoes as part, to become a part of this elite group of Navy SEALs. There's a huge journey, huge training journey. You know, they have a 24 week basic underwater demolition SEAL school. Then they go into a 28 week SEAL qualification training. And then only 1% of the sailors complete the training. Interesting. So they can train up to 30 months then for their very first deployment. So we're talking about 18 months to two years before they even get to put into action or put into practice the things that we have learned. You know, as people of this way, as people of the way of Jesus, um, we're in training. And there is a sense of us leaning into what God is doing and letting him equip us with the skills we need for this time. You know, as a Navy SEAL begins to uh, learn the skills they need, there's a couple of things they look at. This is um, to live this life of a Navy SEAL. There are certain skills that need to be taught. There's attributes that need to be tested. Determination and resilience need to be drummed into them. Relationships are formed and values are ingrained. And as I read that, I thought, oh, that's us. So all these skills that you learn in training, when the trials come, the responses that you've learned almost become like second nature. And the way is taught through trial. The way is taught through testing. The way is taught through trust. The way is taught through relationship. And this is no different. Our relationship with God, this way, this different way of living that Jesus woos us into, um, gives us strength and courage for the days ahead. I want to look at just a couple of things as we close on out today. And if you're taking notes, because we are a people of the way during times of uncertainty, we walk through the valleys. Psalm 23, the psalmist would say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You know, as people of the way, we don't give up. We don't refuse to move. You know, that two-year-old in the shops, that are chucking a tantrum in the corner because things aren't going their way or the way we wanted them to, that's not us. Because we are people of the way, we don't try and escape reality. There are things we need to face and we walk through the valley. The summer said, yea, though I walk through the valley. The valley doesn't go away because you refuse to walk through it. The valley stays until you decide it's time to walk. But the assurance of the Savior, the assurance of our Good Shepherd, is that uh, as you walk through the valley, the position of the Savior shifts. You know, in Israel, as they walk, there's an actual place called the Valley of the Shadow of Death. And as they are walking that valley, um, shepherds are known to switch their position. Where they have been maybe behind their flock or in front of their flock, leading them and protecting them. When they walk through the valley, the shepherd switches their position to being beside the sheep. And that's why the psalmist says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, because why? You are with me. Notice that it doesn't mean that you don't feel afraid, but it means you don't have to be afraid, because if you can understand that the presence of the Savior, the presence of the shepherd, as you walk through the valley, is your assurance of security and strength that it um, marks you as one of his. You are people of the way. You know, when Moses put his stick in the waters and the seas began to open up, the people watched as God showed them a different way out of Egypt. You know, it would have been much easier for them to not walk through the Red Sea. Thank you very much. I'm sure there were, there were other ways for them to get to the promised land. And yet God had designed 
the psalmist would say, pathways through the water that they had no idea were there. Could it be that God has already gone before you in your business, in your employment, in all that you're facing, and that there are already pathways through your impossibilities and through the places that you don't understand that God will use to bring you through? You know, because we are a people of the way, we trust the guide. Uh, they, we know that we are sheep and that we have a shepherd. We're not wandering aimlessly like nomads without a guide. We have a shepherd who guides us, who moves closer. You know, the people of Israel, as they were um, headed through the Red Sea, the scripture actually says that the wind blew the waters, blew the waters all night long and continued to do so. It's amazing. Can you, I mean, we read that like, oh, that's so nice. They walk through the sea. Go ahead and go and have a look at the sea anytime you want and think about going through. It's just, it seems impossible, as does maybe what you're facing right now today. Maybe it's not you. Maybe it's your next door neighbor, someone in your family, whatever you're walking through. God looks at your impossibilities and doesn't see obstacles. We see obstacles. He sees possibility. And so if he knows the way, if he is the way, then it would benefit us to trust him. You know, can you imagine if you were traveling the Alps or you're traveling, you know, if you could travel, that'd be nice. Um, if you were traveling the mountains or just walking and you had no idea where you were going, the possibility of you being lost or not knowing, traveling aimlessly, wasting a whole bunch of time, High, high probability. But what if you traveled with a guide? What if you traveled with someone who knew where they were going, who helped forge the path, who knew the way through? I think um, this is a story I've told before, but we were one of the first people to build in our area. And we would go walking um, as different houses were being built and seeing their progress. And there was this one block of land that's kind of before a major stretch of road and it was just you know knee high grass and everything and I kept thinking gee uh, I wish there was a way to get through there because there was a, a fence and we could get to Caleb school through that way anyway honestly it would have been a year or two um, still no house had been built and then finally someone came and mowed uh, cut the grass they mowed the lawn and lo and behold there was a path the whole time that went through there but it couldn't be seen because of the obstacles. And often God reminds me of that picture. We often look on the surface and just see the outside. He knows the path is already underneath. He knows the way. The difference is he is the way. We can know the way as we know him. You know that passage in Exodus I was talking about is Exodus 14. It says, as Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, verse 10, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. And they said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us out to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Verse 13, and Moses answered the people, do not be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. Go through the sea on dry ground impossible words and yet you go ahead and look at verse 19 then the angel of God who had been traveling in front of Israel's army withdrew and went behind them the pillar of cloud also moved them moved from in front and stood behind them coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel throughout the night the cloud brought darkness to one side and light to the other side so neither went near the the other all night long listen to this verse 21 then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and all that night, the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land and the waters were divided. I don't know about you, but I always, you know, I think of the, I guess the movie and, uh, you know, the images that we have. But I thought when Moses put his, you know, stick in the sea and 
the, the waters automatically went up and then they just walked through and it was just, just this is not the image that we're getting the image is that as Moses stretched out his hand all night long the scripture says all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land can you imagine as you're walking along the land that all night long you hear you hear the wind blowing the sea back you are walking through in faith <laughs> with God hemming you in with your leader leading out in front that sense of uncertainty anytime now the water could crush could come crushing in and yet a mil over a million people went through to the promised land and they walked through the valley that was impossible to find except if you were the guide except if you were the creator except if you'd formed the pathway ahead of time god's already formed the pathway for this season he already knows the way he knows how to lead you forward and he's asking you to trust him because you're people of the way because we're people of the way we can take courage from those who accompany us on the journey and from those who've walked the pavement before us you know david had his mighty men noah had his sons Jesus had his disciples, Esther had Mordecai, Abigail had her servants. Jesus would pray this prayer before he went um, to the cross. He prayed that we would be one and that we would love one another. There is something of strength and courage that happens in us as we stir one another up. And I want to encourage you this week, pick up a phone. Make a phone call to someone that you know in our congregation, in our church family, maybe a friend. Um, why don't you read out, reach out to your neighbors in the street. Put, put a little note in the letterbox and say, hey, if you need anything, here's my phone number. Think of practical ways that we can love one another and be light and salt. You know, it might be your family, but it, it might be... Um, that the people that you are walking this out with are the people that you serve with. You're forging relationships as you walk together and as you have that common purpose. You know, one million Israelites go through the water and they go through it together. And that's us. As we go through this season, as people of the way, we are walking together. You know, and I think the last thing I thought about is people of the way, we sing along the way. Um, not just because some of us like to sing, but because we're instructed to sing. You know, the Psalms has a whole portion in the middle. Um, I guess the highlight being Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And uh, it's called a Psalm of Ascent. They were the Psalms. They were the songs that the people of Israel would sing as they went to the temple. They had a soundtrack that they would play as they went through their lives. And you and I in this season, we can listen to the soundtrack of the news and I think it's great to be informed, but there's a sense that you can be over-informed to the place that it can produce anxiety. I mean, all the statistics are now saying that you can become so obsessed with, with the news, watching it 24 seven, that it affects your mental health. And that this thought that be informed and then change the soundtrack. Put on some worship music, let his word, let his truth, let his life change the atmosphere. Worship changes the atmosphere. Our whinging, our complaining, maybe there's anger and frustration in your house with everyone at home, kids running around. Maybe it's quiet in your house because you're alone. Whatever it is, whatever the atmosphere looks like, you can change it with your voice, with worship. If you struggle, you know, right now to sing, you can put on some worship music and just start with humming, start with whistling. Change the sound of your environment. You know, one of the interesting things to me is that chapter 15 of Exodus, so they travel through the Red Sea and then it says the song of Moses and, and Miriam and they get out their tambourines, these girls, and they begin to sing. Okay, so if I'm leaving my house all these you know gone through the plagues and my household is saved and then my brother says because miriam was moses brother says let's get out of here we're leaving god's gonna you know redeem us and then the the egyptians are chasing us and moses puts his stick out we go through the water all night long it's amazing my guitar probably wouldn't get packed in my bag but somehow these girls remembered their tambourines 
And I, this just does something to me as I think of this thought that we need to pack our praise during this season. This, is, this isn't a time to lose our song. This is a time to let our song shape the atmosphere of our hearts, to shape the atmosphere of our homes, to let worship come and establish um, Jesus right in the middle. That's what worship does. It says that as we worship him, we become aware of his presence. We become more aware of his kingship and his lordship. It's like the old song says, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face. Worship changes your perspective and mine. And so as you change the soundtrack, you know, if you've had a fight in your home this week or there's been tension, go ahead, put on some worship music, put on something that the kids can sing to and, and something that you um, can let out a song to. Trust me, there's something that happens when you change the sound. The bottom line is we aren't meant to do crisis like everyone else. The crisis is in the world. We're not of the world. Our way is through Jesus. He's your guide. He's the reason that you sing. He walks with you. He gives you strength and courage. And the truth that holds us sure is that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life as you go about this week my prayer for you is that you would know the saving strength and power of jesus that you would receive his invitation to go his way and you might be watching um, me today and you've never thought of this jesus way and it is a different way it's a way of love and peace a way of joy and it doesn't let the circumstances dict dictate who we are. And you might not know Jesus, and I'd love to invite you today to know Jesus. He loves you, friend. And he wants you um, to know how much he loves you. When God sent Jesus to the earth, he did it with one reason in mind. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever, whoever, would believe in him, would not perish, but would have eternal life. And if that's you today, I'm going to pray for you. And you have a choice right now to say yes to Jesus. And if you say yes to Jesus, would you get on the chat and tell our team or email, we'd love to send you out some material and start you on this journey. You don't have to do this life alone. There's a savior, a good shepherd that wants to walk you through. And we can be certain in uncertain times because we're a people of the way and Jesus is the way. So God, I pray for my church family today. I thank you for them. I thank you how they're rallying around each other in this season. I thank you that because they belong to you, because they are people of the way, that you're protecting them and guiding them. I thank you that uh, you have a plan and a purpose, even in this very season. I ask that the blessing of the Lord would chase them down, that love and mercy would follow them. That God, even as uh, you guard their going out and their coming in, that there would be nothing that would... Um, that they wouldn't be able to face because you are walking with them. I pray that we wouldn't be those who sit in the corner and waiting for this to pass. But God, I pray that we walk through this with grace and kindness and joy and peace. Help us, Lord God, even with patience, with um, all the things that we have going on. We trust you. We thank you that you're the keeper of the way. You're the maker of the way. And you are our way. Jesus, we love you. And as a people, we say thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. And how great was that message? If you have any questions about what you've just heard today, make sure you have a chat with our team that's on standby, ready to answer any questions you have. You, stay tuned. You're on tonight. Check out the social media for all the details of all the different ways we're getting connected this week together. See ya. Have a good week.